So we were going over our video catalog the other day, and while we have a vast number of repair videos concerning all generations of the Boogaboo Chameleon, we realized that we have, in fact, never done an actual review, which is strange because if any single stroller has been the most instrumental for the growth of our business since really the very beginning, it's the Boogaboo Chameleon. At this point, there's probably not a single component of any mechanism from any generation of the Chameleon that I wouldn't be able to identify immediately, many of them blindfolded. I'm not trying to brag, that's just the way it is. Boogaboo Chameleons have been with me through at least five different workshop locations, and I've probably spent hundreds, if not thousands of hours fixing them. So, sit back, today we're gonna to tell you what's good about the Chameleon, what's bad, and discuss whether or not you should buy one, at this point in Boogaboo history. The first Boogaboo Chameleon, released as the Chameleon, came out in 2005, but really the design is older, because Boogaboo has always, essentially, been making Chameleons. All of their earlier models, the Boogaboo Classic, Frog, and Gecko, are really all just older versions of the Chameleon itself. And in a way, all of the other models, other than the bee and the ant that is, are design-wise also really just branches off the Chameleon tree. From 2005 until today, under the name Chameleon though, there have been three versions. I know that at this point there's a Chameleon 3 Plus or whatever, but all that's really new with the Plus are a few changes to the textiles, nothing mechanical, so it doesn't really count as a new iteration in my opinion. So what then is a Boogaboo Chameleon? Simply put, the Chameleon was the first stroller on the market to combine the following characteristics into a single model. It was a four-wheel, front swivel wheel, reversible seat, lightweight, easy to fold, revolutionary development for an industry that, at that time, had basically only four-wheel fixed wheel strollers and umbrella-style travel pushchairs. Now, of course, the market looks very different. Okay, enough with the history lesson. Let's start zeroing in on the Chameleon 3 itself beginning with some stats. The Chameleon clocks in at just under 9.6 kilos. It's 90 by 50 by 31 centimeters folded. It takes up to 17 kilos in the seat and four kilos in the shopping basket. How is a Boogaboo Chameleon 3 going to feel when you're using it? Quite comfortable actually, at first, provided at least that you stick to smooth terrain and don't overburden its tiny six inch front wheels. It's lightweight, intuitive with its buttons, and has just the right amount of bounce in the central locking mechanism to make up for the lack of a dedicated rear suspension unit. Sufficient enough for urban environments, at least. There are a couple of innovations that I miss on it that you find on competing models, even from Boogaboo itself. The first being a single rear-mounted lever on the frame for adjusting seat height. They've so far stuck with these two big side buttons. And the second being the ability to fold it with the seat attached. Other than that, though, the Chameleon, from a comfort and use perspective, has done a good job of staying current and comfortable in a market that, long ago, became flooded with copies of itself. Okay, let's look at the mechanics then, top to bottom. The Chameleon has a contiguous telescopic handle and all of the major functions needed while operating the stroller are accessible from the handle itself. These would be the handle height adjustment mechanism, which is here. This handle height adjustment mechanism has changed, as with the other mechanisms, with each successive generation of the Chameleon, and its current iteration is, I think, what they sort of consider to be perfection, because it's the same mechanism that you find pretty much across the Boogaboo spectrum in relation to their other models as well. The brake is now a single click-on, click-off system, whereas in the past it was stratified, and there were some issues with that, so they have fixed that as well. And the buttons for locking and unlocking the chassis have also been improved from the Chameleon 2, which had a safety system with an extra clip portion on one side that would sometimes fall off. So all three of these mechanisms definitely show the improvement of design over time as they have become aware of various things that can go wrong with the Chameleon. The central locking mechanism, unfortunately, unlike the handle mechanisms and a lot of the other mechanisms on the stroller, is one that they still have not gotten right yet. Uh, they have changed the way it functions a little bit over time. Uh, on the Chameleon 3, the last two discs have been changed in the way they function such that you no longer need to click the seat into place in order to lock the distance between the front and rear frames. But the key area, which is between the first and second discs, has uh, continued to be more or less the same mechanism. They've just changed the sizes and uh, orientation a little bit of the parts inside. Uh, what I find is that all three generations of the Chameleon have broken regularly in this area uh, and 
the way that it breaks has actually gotten successively worse up until the Chameleon 3. What I mean by that is that uh, the parts that broke in the first generation were easier to switch, uh, second generation were a little bit harder, and now with the Chameleon 3, when you have problems and breakage in the central locking mechanism, it's actually quite serious. There are a lot of parts that tend to be worn down and broken with that. Now, why is this a problem? Because on other Boogaboo models, the central locking mechanism is actually quite tight. The Buffalo and the Donkey have very tight central locking mechanisms. The Runner has a very solid central locking mechanism. In my opinion, it is simply in order to have that added function on the Chameleon of being able to swap the handle over to the opposite side and get the large rear wheels in the front. Uh, to me, that's actually kind of a relatively useless function that I've almost never used myself. If you are a Chameleon owner, uh, I would love to hear in the comments whether you would rather have a stronger central locking mechanism and avoid that uh, simple idea of being able to swap the handle over from one side to the other. Because if they were to get rid of that idea, they could very easily put a much more solid central locking mechanism onto this thing. Uh, just borrow it from the runner or from the buffalo and make like a mini version. Overall, this is definitely the weakest point on the Chameleon chassis, and it's not just a matter of braking. Uh, a lot of people complain after a, a short period of time, say a year or so, although this is very dependent on how you use a stroller, not just that it's broken, as in it no longer has resistance on one side, but that it's loose. And the problem with this is that it's not uh, the sort of a setup where you have a screw underneath that you can simply tighten the whole thing together and make it no longer loose. Um, when it becomes loose, it's because the plastic actually wears down between the first and the second disc, and it's just gonna remain loose. It's not something you can tighten up afterwards. Okay, let's have a look at the rear end of the model. So uh, rear end is another one of those areas where they've actually gotten the improvements uh, of design over time correct. Uh, starting with the way that the rear wheels attach, you sometimes had problems where the rear axle would loosen up quite a lot and you'd get problems where the uh, rear wheel would then rub against the brake shoes and make noises um, or you'd have uh, driving problems and stuff with that. All of that has kind of been ironed out with the new way that the uh, rear wheel axle looks and attaches into the rear frame. Uh, other changes that they've made include uh, the loss of the adjustment screw on the brake line, but I haven't really seen any problems related to that, so I would guess that they've simply gotten to the point where they've measured everything absolutely perfect in regards to the brake system, and now you're not having those sort of problems. As I've said before, the uh, Boogaboo Chameleon doesn't have any sort of dedicated suspension unit on the back, but um, one cool thing about the Boogaboo is that the central locking mechanism, even though it wears down as a result of this, uh, does uh, tend to withstand a lot of the shocks as you go over terrain, and from a comfort perspective at least, um, makes it kind of unnecessary, provided you're staying on smooth terrain, of having any sort of large dedicated suspension unit in the rear. Okay, we'll have a look at the front frame. As far as what a chameleon is, again, uh, there have been a number of improvements over time. Uh, most seriously, again, the way that the axle system is set up, it's a little bit tighter than it was before. Uh, you tend not to get a lot of wobbly problems on chameleons unless they are very, very old. Boogaboo is actually quite good with dealing with any sort of wobbly issues related to that axle widening out the housing, so you aren't gonna have those sort of a problems. Uh, I've always liked the way that the front wheels lock into place that big button in the back. It does have some inbuilt suspension, but of course we're dealing with six inch wheels, so you're not going to get any real terrain capability. Now, I wanted to make one note on terrain because they do have a uh, terrain wheel. Uh, the terrain wheel is not uh, swivel, just so you know, in case you're thinking about getting terrain wheels. Uh, and because it's not swivel, um, it actually puts a little bit extra pressure onto that already weak design of the central locking mechanism because you're forced then to lift up the stroller by pushing down on the handle every time you want to turn the stroller. In addition, I would say that the Boogaboo Chameleon is definitely just an urban stroller. And if you're finding that you are interested in buying those terrain wheels for anything other than you live in Manhattan and there's a little bit of snow on the ground. So you do tend to go to the park. Oh, well, they have these terrain wheels. Let's get them. No, that once you start thinking terrain wheels, most likely you're going down a dark path with your Boogaboo Chameleon, which is going to lead towards looseness and breaking. So if you are interested in the uh, terrain wheels, you have a Chameleon, uh, it might be a good indication that you should sell your Chameleon and get a different stroller. 
Okay, I just want to make one last note on the wheels in general. I've always been a fan of uh, Boogie Boo wheels in particular on the Chameleon and in particular the rear wheel. The front wheel is quite interesting in its uh, design as well, the fork and so on, and it has been around for a very long time. So there are a lot of cool stuff in the front wheel. But the rear wheel uh, is actually quite unique. I believe it's the first stroller ever to integrate a foam filled tire uh, into its design, which is which is quite revolutionary because you get a certain amount of uh, shock absorption from having that tire in the foam, but you don't, of course, have any sort of pumping issues. And even cooler than that on Boogaboo has always been this raised ridge that they have on the rear tire. Uh, this allows a stroller to cut uh, as it drives in a way, it, like moves smoother because of that. I'm, I, like, I like to think of it like an ice skater or something. I don't know exactly why, I don't know the physics of it, but it is a lot smoother when you have this wheel that has the raised ridge. Uh, in addition, of course, the raised ridge wears down before it even gets to the rest of the tire, so you have added longevity as a result of that. So, is the Boogaboo Chameleon right for you? No, no it's not. Usually this is the part where I list the various aspects necessary in your lifestyle for a stroller of this class to suit you perfectly. If I were going to do that with a Chameleon 3, I would say that you should live in a smooth urban environment, have a special need for a light and small folding stroller that still has the capability to withstand longer day trips and so on. But I'm not doing that. Instead, I'm just going to say outright that the Boogaboo Chameleon 3 is not right for you. Not this generation, period. And the reason for that is the central locking mechanism. I've just simply seen too many problems with it breaking down to recommend this stroller to anyone, unfortunately. So until they fix it, don't buy a Chameleon. If you really want to go Boogaboo, buy a Fox. It's not really that much more expensive. Or go for something else. When the Chameleon 4 comes out, hopefully they'll have finally fixed this issue, but until that day, I will sadly not in any way endorse this model. In any case, we hope this video has been interesting for you. And if it has been, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. Thank you.